Hi, my name's DJ Clark, and in this video, what I want to do is to look at preamps for DSLRs. Now, like many other multimedia producers, I've been enamored by the DSLR, my shoot stills and video, and it's my go-to camera. I use it all the time. I've tried video cameras, but I keep coming back to the DSLR. Beautiful picture, but we have a problem with the sound. It's not great. The amplifier inside the camera that takes the microphone and amplifies it up, introduces all sorts of hisses and hums that we don't really want. So what I'm gonna to do today is to look at some solutions for that. And there have been a lot of solutions that have come out on the market. We're gonna do a test. Uh, it's, it is as scientific as I can make it, and I'm not a scientist, um, but I'm in a soundproof room, so hopefully we won't have anything introduced. And I've, I've lent a whole bunch of different preamps from friends, from Sharon, who's also on the podcast from Dan Chun and other people that I know. So I'm gonna go through these in a minute and explain, but first let me just explain the preamp idea. The idea is that you take one of these devices, I've just bought one of them here, and you put it as a, um, <coughs> in, in between, um, this comes in, your, your, your microphone comes into this, and then from this you go into the camera. The idea is to get the camera the amplifier on the, on the camera down to just one notch above zero. You wanna take out all the amplification that the camera's doing other than just picking up a sound signal. And this is the device that is gonna be cranked up to produce the sound. Now hopefully these devices have got much better preamps than we've got in the DSLR. But there's so many on the market now, I wanna try a few and I wanna do a comparison between what you're getting from these and what you would be getting if you were going straight into the camera. So what I've got here, let me just go through them one by one very quickly, um, is a, a whole range of set. I am missing some, I know I don't have them all. Uh, I don't have by any means all of the, that are on the market and there's some brands in particular that I'm missing, but I'm sorry, I can't do anything about that. Um, I have got the two uh, latest TAS cams. These devices, this is the one that's only just come out. I think it's called the DR70, DR70D, is that right? DR70D, so I need to put my glasses on. And this will be the DR60D, the one that came out previously. We'll test these two. I've also got the very popular Zoom recorders. I've got an H5, an H4N, and an H1. So we're not gonna be recording on these. We're gonna be using them as a preamp. So we're gonna be running the um, sound through from the microphone into this device. Um, amplifying on this and then going into the camera. I've also got the very popular juice link, uh, or one of the juice links, there's a number of these. And I've got a couple of local Chinese branded. This is a very small one, a nice little device um, that we're gonna try, um, it's called a My Link, no sorry, a My Mink. I don't know what that means, or My Mic, maybe that's what it's meant to say. Um, and another one here. Now this one is the only one, This is they're both from um, a company called Saramonic, it's a Chinese company. Uh, this is the only one that doesn't have any power in it. So this simply is trying to take the hum out, um, but we, do, we don't introduce any power. Okay, a couple of other things here that I want to show you. Um, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna do a test mainly with this um, uh, Rode microphone, the NTG2, very popular. I know that there's been an upgrade to it. There's an NTG4 now and a 4 Plus. There's also an NTG3. Um, but this is a pretty standard microphone that might be used as a shotgun microphone. Um, that will be my main mic for testing all of these um, because it should be the cleanest sound and I'm gonna try and keep equal distance. I'm also gonna set the level by using my mobile phone and playing a tone. So with the tone, I can make sure the level on each of these devices is the same before we start the recording. We don't have different levels, uh, so that otherwise that would be unfair. I've also got a radio mic. Now, quite often I use my radio mic because this has got a preamp inside it as well. So I can push this up fairly high. So we'll do a test with this also um, with the camera. A um, couple of other things to note. The, um, the cords, the lines that I'm gonna use are either the line that came with it. If I don't have a line that came with it, that is a, a cord to connect this from the amp into the camera, um, I'm going to use um, this one, uh, which is a, let me just find out for you. <laughs> Terrible. Um, this is a Sescom C61, um, which is a line that's, that's specifically designed to try to um, come out of a sound recorder out of a headphone socket um, and into 
the uh, the camera, which is the only way that you're going to get the sound out of these sound recorders. So a Sescom unit with these, with the other ones with the line provided. Okay, I think that's it. It's time to get on with the test. Um, you're going to see me in the picture. I'm going to talk. I'm going to count to 10 and I'm going to give you 10 seconds of silence so you can try and pick up any noises that might be coming from uh, the camera or whatever. We'll go one by one as we go through them. So in this first recording I have plugged the microphone directly into the camera so that there's no preamp. We're using the preamp in the camera for this uh, and the levels obviously on the camera are turned quite far up. So I am testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and I'm going to give you 10 seconds of silence. So this is with the Saramonic My Mic, I think it's, it is how you pronounce it. It's a very small unit, uh, it's very discreet, sits just on top of the camera, very nice. But actually I've not been able to bring the levels down that far on the camera. I was hoping I was going to be able to bring them down a lot further than that. Okay, so you've heard the quality of this mic, now I am going to give you 10 seconds of silence. Okay, so in this test, I am testing the Zoom H1. Now, this is a really popular recorder. We're going in through the Sescom cable from the Zoom H1 headphones. We've actually got the levels on the on the Zoom H1 turned up as high as we can, both the, the input level for the mic and also the output level, so that we can bring down the volume as much as possible and use the internal amplifier in the Zoom H1. Okay, let's give it 10 seconds. Okay, so now I'm with the Zoom H4n. Now, a lot of you might already have this recorder. It was really popular, came out before a lot of other recorders, so a lot of us bought them. Um, now, this may well be all you need. It may mean you're going to save yourself a lot of money. The quality of this, we are now going into XLR in, which means we're going to get a slightly better connection and hopefully a little better uh, quality of, of sound, not so much interference, etc. We haven't actually been able to get it quite up to the one notch above zero on the Canon camera. We did with the Zoom H1 surprisingly but with this configuration we've pushed it up as far as we can um, and we still got a few notches which means the the 5D Mark III is still doing a little bit of work it's its sound recorder is doing a bit but we've, we've certainly got it down much lower than just using the um, the camera by itself okay I'm gonna give you 10 seconds of silence Okay, so now we're moving on to the latest in the Zoom line, the H5. Unfortunately, we don't have the H6, which is a slightly bigger recorder uh, to work with. The H5 is a kind of cut-down version, but it is a current version. So this is the best that they've got at the moment. We have now managed to get the level right down to just one above, which is where we should be uh, with the audio. So we're just using the H5 in order to record this. Okay, I'm going to give you 10 seconds of silence. Just be aware... And when we do go into this 10 seconds, we can hear there is a fan up here, a very slight uh, hiss of a fan. So if you're hearing a little bit of a hiss, it could be the fan and not um, something that's been introduced. Okay, so here we have the Tascam DR60D. Now this is the older version. I'm looking at it right across. It's actually almost as big as the 5D Mark III. It's a huge thing, but it can also record sound. So you can record sound straight into it. It takes an XLR socket. You can also put it under the camera if you want. But as I said, it does gonna, it is gonna add quite a lot of bulk to the camera. Okay, let's give it a, um, a full um, 10 second test.
Okay, so this one is now the Tascam uh, DR70D. This is the upgrade to the 60D that we just tried. It's got microphones on the front. It certainly looks a lot slimmer, though it is actually slightly wider than the 60D, but it, it kind of looks a little better. Certainly it would look better if it was sitting underneath the camera at the moment. It's on top and it can do both like the 60DR. Okay, 10 seconds of silence. Okay, so this is the Juice Link Micro Riggy. It's my go-to preamp. It's the one that I bought probably <coughs> over a year ago, and I've been using it pretty well on every assignment when I'm doing my interviews. Um, I, I really like it. It can take three XLR inputs. It's fairly small. It's easy to attach to the camera. Um, but I just want to see how it fares. It's not cheap, so I want to see how it fares with the other ones. Okay, 10 seconds of silence. Okay, so this is a little bit strange. This is called the Saramonic. It's a Chinese brand, but it doesn't have any power in it. So it's not effectively a preamp. It's designed to take the signal from this microphone, cut out any of the interference, and make it clean before it puts it into the camera. So you're getting a cleaner signal rather than going directly from the microphone. That's the theory behind it. We're going to have to see how it compares with the others. And that, but on the on the 5D Mark III, I have my levels turned right up, so I'm really using the camera preamp. Um, but as I said, hopefully it's a cleaner si signal, so it's going to amp it better. Okay, 10 seconds. So in this test, I want to test two different wires. Now, one of the things that Sharon did when she handed over to me all of her gear is she gave me some special cables, and this is one of them. She said, use this as a way of getting an XLR socket into the camera. It's an XLR converter from XLR to mini jack. But she said with this one, it's especially designed to go into the DSLR rather than the ordinary one that you get from the market. So I'm going to test this first. And then after this, I'm going to plug in the one that I got from the market. 10 seconds. So that concludes my test. You can listen to them yourself, but not just quite. Now, what I've done on this final video is to actually put my radio mic on without going through anything. Just put my radio mic, a Sony radio mic on top of the camera and put the output level as high as possible from the radio mic. This is something I do as a second resort. I personally tend to use um, the, the micro riggy if I'm doing interviews. And if I can't use a micro riggy, or if I'm just running and gunning following somebody and I don't want a lot of stuff to carry on my camera, I'll do this. I'll make it as loud as possible. So this is another alternative. Just remember, if you're going to switch it back to the micro riggy, then take the levels down. Otherwise, it's going to be too much. So um, here, I'm able to get it almost down to zero on the camera, just using the preamp in the radio mic itself. Um, this isn't a fair test as well because the microphone is here and not here as I've been standing before, so the distance isn't the same. Um, but anyway, it gives you a, a, a slight idea. Okay, that's it. I'm going to give you 10 seconds of silence. Also, just to say, this is not a scientific test, as I said at the beginning, and I'm sure you've probably found things that are wrong. We've kind of, as we've gone along, we've realized things aren't always 100% on a, on a level playing field, and I'm sure the manufacturers of some of this equipment would probably be able to tell you that they can get better sound out of it by adjusting a few things, because we don't know the equipment that well, apart from possibly the micro wiggy that I use all the time and the zooms as well. Okay, that's it. I'm going to give you 10 seconds of silence just with my radio mic. <laughs>